Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to do a brief overview of using the image sampler. And we're going to be looking at creating uh, the skull. Alright, so we'll make a new document and we're going to drop down the image sampler which you can find in input. And we're also going to bring in, okay we'll double click that and we're going to set an image. I'm going to use this skull that I found and I'll click OK. Um, okay, now we're going to plug in a rectangular grid and we're also going to plug in some values. Um, we'll set the slider to a maximum of 50 and then we'll plug these in. So like with most things in Grasshopper the image sampler also can work on a 0 to 1 bounds. If you wanted, you could set the bounds here to whatever you want. Um, so if you wanted to set it to the size of the image. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a workaround for how we wouldn't need to set the size of the image and we could just use this 0 to 1 domain. The way we're going to do that is we're going to bring we're going to import the image into Grasshopper as well, like this. And we're going to grab a read file component and a file path. So I'm going to set my file path to the skull. Actually, I don't need this read file. I'll just plug that straight in. And you'll notice straight off the bat that Grasshopper brings in the image is well and good, but uh, it's not exactly what we want, so we're going to turn that off and we're going to create a bounding box around that. So that bounding box is going to give us a flat box as the result. So we're going to use a deconstruct brep component, and that's going to give us a surface about which we can get some information, such as the surface dimensions. So this tells us how big it is in the U and V direction. And what we can do is instead of using these sliders with arbitrary values here, we can figure out the exact ratio we need. So we're going to divide U by V and then we'll all base it on this one slider. And so, okay, we'll have a look. So the ratio is 0.74 and our U value is 514 and our V value is 691 meaning that this number or this multiplication is going to give us our U parameter or our V or, or sorry our, our U or our X value U and X are sort of analogous to each other so this is going to go into my extent X and this is going to go into my extent y. Your extent x and your extent y are the amount of numbers, or the amount of points you want in each direction. And so then our size x and y are going to be defined by a 1 over x. This will ensure that our bounds remain between 0 and 1. So this is going to be our x value and we'll make another one for our Y size. Now we'll just check that, just so that I can prove that to you, with a bounds component and a panel. We'll plug our points in, and we'll flatten that. Okay, looks like we've got some sort of issue there. Let me just check the... Ah, oh, sorry, I haven't deconstructed the points. So I'll deconstruct that. We'll check out x 0 to 1 and our y is also 0 to 1. Good. So that's working. Um, we'll plug those points in there. And so now what the image sampler does, well it can do a number of things. Um, what it's doing at the moment is, it, is it's looking at every single corresponding pixel in this 0 to 1 space and it's returning a color value. That's pretty cool. Um, the 
the image sampler though gives you a whole bunch of different options so at the moment we're set to RGBA colors which is why we're getting a list of three numbers if we wanted we could just get the red channel and so that would give you the amount of red in every single pixel in this image you could do the same with green, blue, transparency which is alpha, um, hue, saturation and the one we're going to use is color brightness. This is going to turn into a black and white image and we're going to get a 0 to 1 value as our output. Cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of this off because we don't need it at the moment. Now we're also going to create another rectangular grid. I'm going to disconnect my X and Y size and so at the moment Grasshopper uh, for the rectangular grid it sets our sizes to 1 and 2 so we're just going to create a uniform number we use 1 in each direction and now we'll get rid of that panel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these values as um, a direction, in, uh, not a direction, a value in which to move each of these points. Um, we are also going to need a multiplier, or else our distance, uh, as our distance might be negligible. And I'll set that to ten, and we'll plug that into our z and we'll plug our points into the geometry. And so you might be able to see a, the skull a bit subtly there. There we go, it's being raised out a bit more. And now we're gonna create a mesh from points, one of my favorite, probably most used tools in Grasshopper at the moment. Remember, it's not a stock Grasshopper component though. You need to load in the mesh edit component which you can find on the Food for Rhino website. Okay, so our U and V values, like we've done multiple times, are going to be U plus 1, U and V, and V plus 1. Now get rid of the corresponding U and Vs that aren't needed. So this is our u value, this is our v value, and when we plug this in here we're also going to need to flatten these points coming in here and we should get a mesh result. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that so maybe we'll, uh, we'll bump up the resolution a bit and maybe we'll increase our offset and we'll turn off these grids. Turn my mesh lines on and there you go, you can see the face starting to appear or the skull starting to appear. Um, now that's alright but we're gonna, we'll try something different. We'll disable this and these as well and what I'm gonna do so I'm going to use all of these to create a circle with a given radius. Uh, let's see, I want just a circle. And so I'm going to put one on every single point here. And I'll plug in my radius value. Now those are pretty large at the moment because they're being multiplied. So if we just plug the... Um, stock value out. We're still getting some overlap because these are one by one grids and all of these circles have a maximum radius of one meaning the, diam the diameter is going to be two and they're going to be crossing over. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another multiplier and we'll give that a maximum value of one and we'll set it to 0 0.5. So now when we plug that into here and that into there we are now getting our skull with no intersecting circles and so that's pretty neat we could bump up 
this resolution to whatever we wanted. Say, I don't know, I don't want to go too huge, but 200 or to 200 will probably be the sort of upper limit of where we want to work to. And there we go, that's our skull. Um, you also notice these lines that I'm getting down the middle, that's just based off of the image that I chose. Uh, that's not really a fault with the program or anything. What we do have though in Grasshopper, the image sampler, is this interpolate uh, option, which will sort of look at the neighboring pixels in the image and try to reduce any chances of noise that might be making their way in. And so you'll see a, a slight sort of reduction in the emphasis of those lines. Not much though, but it can be quite helpful at times. Now what we also could do is I could take all of this and we could create a, um, a conditional statement. So I'm going to say if x is greater than y, true, false. Um, so remember, for a conditional statement, we put our if, our open parentheses, our condition, so if x is greater than y, then our true condition, and then our false condition. So basically what I'm going to say if is if this, um, if this pixel brightness value is greater than a certain number, um, then true, otherwise false. So we're going to be able to use this to cull out um, anything that's below a certain brightness. And so this gives us a culling pattern, so we just need to put it into a cull pattern. And so we need to cull, oops, we need to cull firstly this list. We need to cull the list of values from here, as well as the list of points from here. Um, and then we'll plug this into both of these. And at the moment it's set to 1, so it's going to be culling absolutely everything. And as we decrease that, you can see our skull geometry starting to come back in. I'm going to turn this off. We'll quickly disable the solver. Um, let me see which was which. So these are my planes, and these are my radius values. I'll just flip those around so it's easier to see. And I'll enable this. And there you go. And if we were to slowly increase the slider, you can see we're slowly removing more and more of our skull geometry as we slide that up. And if I go too far, I might... Oh, no. Ah, sorry, I haven't... Uh... I'm also going to multiply this result over here and plug it in. Okay, so yeah. So you can see at some point I lost that line right down the middle of my skull, which, uh, yeah, so it's about there somewhere. Yeah. So this is a pretty neat way to work with geometry. Um, you can literally do anything you want with these values. You could use them to displace the points a certain height. You could use an attractor point on them to uh, maybe give them a certain color and then use a custom preview in order to see what happens with that. You could use this value to assign a rotation to a box or you know, a rectangle around here. And then we could take something like this, probably not at this resolution, but we could take a whole bunch of circles and we could send them through a laser cutter or something and create a pretty cool result. Yeah, so that's uh, that's working with the image sampler.